Next question is from Connie Chiwa. In addition to building muscle, are there other ways to speed up the metabolism? Yeah, so that's the number one right way, right? The, the most effective way. And I know there's a controversy like, oh, it doesn't burn that much more calories, whatever. Bullshit. Okay, it's total bullshit. Um, you talk to any coach, any trainer, anybody who's worked with people for longer than five years, and they'll tell you, yeah, when I get my clients to build muscle, they can eat a lot more calories and they can stay leaner mm -hmm. a lot easier. Um, so, a lot more than what the study shows. Yeah, it, it just, it just, that doesn't equate. Um, again, my experience is in the opposite. I mean, look, I'm sedentary most of the day. I know I lift weights for an hour, but for mostly I'm very sedentary. I still can eat. Uh, now, I, I, my, I'm definitely not burning a lot of calories through activity, but because I have so much muscle, I still can eat a lot of calories in comparison to the average person. If the average person ate as many calories as I did every day, they'd be over, you know, obese or overweight. Now, so. do you think that there's other factors that, and that's why, because when they tease that out there, just measuring what, what, how much energy muscle is using when there's other factors. For example, when you're on a workout program and you're trying to build muscle and you are building muscle, it means you're probably eating better. Mm-hmm. And if you're eating better, there's a good chance that your digestion is a lot better. And so do you think that is also a factor in what we see as coaches, you know, like, oh, my client, I got him for the last three months. We've been following this plan, diet's dialed in. They've built five or six pounds of muscle and, oh, my God, they're eating 600 more calories. That doesn't line up with what the studies say about muscle. But do you think that's because there's other factors like digestion? That's, that's I, I think it goes yeah. deeper than that, right? I think if you are – so there's a – and this is something I think we're going to start to really learn more about uh, in the future. But your our metabolism, our body has this range of how many calories it can burn and it can, it can make itself more efficient – or less efficient with calories. So when your body becomes less efficient with calories, it, mm. it essentially wastes more energy. When it becomes more efficient, it literally becomes more efficient. It conserves more calories. So simply increasing your calories. Okay, so if, if somebody eats a little more, their body tends to burn more calories. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a small effect, but we see it. Restricting your calories uh, for long periods of time, you will start to see, even before muscle loss, you'll start to see the body start to burn a, a little less calories. I think the entire process of building muscle, sending yeah. the signal, building the muscle, eating more calories, a little bit more protein, yeah, all of being those properly things. recovered too, right? Sleep has to be a factor and all that for balance and hormones and everything to contribute to, you know, raising your metabolism. Like just like you said, the entire process of, you know, uh, pursuing, uh, you know, building muscle, I'm sure, you know, all those components have a factor. Right, cuz hormones are, you know, will they affect your metabolism and speed it up? I guess in the long term, you'll probably know Notice if, if a, a hormone like testosterone, for example, or growth hormone starts to build muscle. Um, but really what, what it's doing is it's signaling the body to do different things with the calories you eat, right? So if, I, if my testosterone is optimal, then my body's getting a signal that uh, to build more muscle. So more of my calories that I consume are going to go to muscle. And that in turn then speeds up my well, metabolism. Well, also being healthy, right? Absolutely. We, yeah, if you're fighting yourself internally, uh, you know, the, that's a lot of wasted uh, energy expended. Yeah, so here's the other end of this. Uh, doing things that uh, make you unhealthy will can make your body want to conserve more calories. So right. speeding up your metabolism, well, okay, you brought up sleep, uh, Justin. If you get little sleep and it's shitty sleep, there's a few things that happen, we know. Number one, it does change your... Your, your cravings. We tend to crave more hyper palatable food, probably because we feel crappy and it makes us feel better in the short term. But even beyond that, right? If you're sleeping little, the body perceives that as a stress. When your body feels like it's under a lot of stress, hormone profiles change and your body wants to conserve energy when it feels stressed, probably because for most of the time humans have been on earth, uh, if we were stressed, it probably had to do with the fact that we couldn't find food, right? That was probably one of the main sources of stress uh, for us, at least chronic stress. Right. Is that, oh, we can't find food. Mm -hmm. So the body starts to learn to conserve calories. So if you get shitty sleep all the time, what will end up happening is your body is uh, storing more calories or trying to, simultaneously also trying to get you to burn less calories, eventually causing muscle loss because you know muscle is more of an expensive tissue so it's like your body's saying okay we need to become more efficient uh there's a few things we can do and then down the road it's okay let's get rid of muscle we don't need to burn as many calories this person's un under stress so over time you start to kind of store more calories and you throw on top of that your your cravings start to change so yeah i mean you want to be healthy uh you want to get good sunlight make sure your nutrients are balanced in your body you're not lacking any nutrients you have any deficiencies um, and you know, and then again, of course, 
building muscle. I, I can't tell you. Look, if you have worked in a gym for a while, you know, I remember after about five or six years working in gyms, th- I would see these people, and we had name, we had there were, there were like terms for them, like cardio bunnies, right? Was like yeah. one one mm-hmm. term. These were people that were consistent. They're some of the most consistent people that came to the gym. They'd come in same time every day, and they do cardio. One and then hour stairmaster. Yeah, oh, one yeah. hour cardio, and then they leave. And it's you like their religion. And you would notice that often their bodies never changed, and they would often be skinny fat. Now, you know, being uh, somebody who's very involved in the gyms that I ran, I always knew my regular members. I always made it a point to talk to people, so I became friends with some of them. I talked to them, and we talk about diet. And there were more than a couple times where these cardio kings and queens that would come in because you'd see the guys doing it. The, yep. They'd have a little bit of the beer belly but they're doing their cardio and the girl that sweats on everything yeah Yeah. and i would ask them about their diet and there were like a couple of them more than a couple that actually tracked their food and i would look at their nutrition logs and the women were eating like a thousand calories the guy was like you know 1500 calories and yet he he would talk to me and say i can't lose this last 15 pounds of body fat i do an hour of cardio six days Mm -hmm. a week sometimes two hours of cardio it's not coming off i'd look at their diet and be like well, we need to just teach your body to burn more calories. This is not what you're doing now is maintaining your 15 pounds of body fat that you need to lose. Right. Let's switch it up. And I actually got a couple of them to change their routines to to lift weights. And then lo and behold, the body fat, you know, came off their body. Yep. 